Excited to be talking all things immune boosting with Mira. Now, this time, it should work. So, it takes a couple of seconds for Mira to be able to come in. Um, and, oh yes, she wants to be in my video. Approve. Couple of seconds. Hey! Oh, Mira! We did Shelly! it! Good morning from New Zealand, Australia, and it must be an afternoon for you. It is the afternoon. So you know what? I'm going to tell you, I wonder if maybe it doesn't work on the computer, because I did not... We've just yeah. realized. Phones, yeah. phones only. Thank you to Erin for problem solving with us as we I'm tapping away furiously. There we go. Oh my goodness, that is so funny. And so man, you is... type fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, did I say? And I touch type too. So I, oh, Mira, you've got to stay vertical. Have you changed your phone screen? Oh, there. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Much better. Okay. So we're super excited to have you this morning. Tell us, what are your favorite tips and tricks at this time of the year? We started the Facebook Live when it was dark outside over here, and it's still dark in Australia. Um, and so people are starting to get coughs and colds. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite things to do, and you have to remember, of course, obviously, you're on the other half of the world, so it's winter for you, but yes. it's, it's summer for us. But in the winter time here, one of my very favorite things to do is to brew up a batch of elderberry syrup. So, and part how of the, do you do that? Well, you know what? Honestly, it, it's easy to just buy the elderberries. So you want to get dried elderberries. And it's really important, by the way, for people to know, don't ever eat fresh elderberries because they can really upset your tummy. What you want to do is you want to make an extract from them. So you, and I'll, I'll send you the recipes so that you can add them to the website later. But, awesome. um, yeah. <laughs> But what you want to do is you want to uh, basically take, uh, it's about a half a cup of dried elderberries and like two cups of water because it's a, a four to one ratio. Yeah. And then you can add in some cinnamon stick. You can add in a little ginger if you want, maybe some cloves. You bring it to a boil and then you turn it down to a simmer and you just let it simmer for like an hour. And that pulls all of that lovely beneficial stuff out of the elderberries and then you strain it, let it cool, and then you add in a little bit of honey so it, it tastes a little sweeter. And you could just store it in the refrigerator. And uh, my husband's gotten very good about in the winter. I just like force feed him a, a teaspoon, a tablespoonful every day. And then so you, when we're sick, I'm sorry? You only need a tablespoon, so it's not like a cup of tea. It's not like a big tonic, it's just a small amount. Yeah, it's a small tonic. So generally what I recommend is a tablespoon a day for preventative during the winter. But then when you get sick, if you need to, you can take a tablespoon like three times a day. And so it, generally I make one batch and it lasts me almost the whole winter unless somebody gets really, really sick. But, you know, elderberries are so good for us because they're, they're very high in vitamins A and C. They're good, um, a good source of bioflavonoids. And elderberry syrup is great for boosting the immune system. It's good if you have coughs or colds. It's antiviral. So it's just a really good thing to have in your herbal medicine cabinet. And you just buy them dried? You don't dry them yourselves or any, yourself or anything like that? Yes, because they're very tiny. And while I used to That's go right, foraging right. for them, it's not worth it. It's so much easier to just buy them already dried. <laughs> Because they're, they're tiny, so you got to pick them off, and then you got to comb them all off the branches. It's just, it's a pain. I was thinking that, too. I was like, that sounds like way too much hard work trying to forage that sort of stuff. Yeah. Now, one of the things I will tell you, though, is it's important. So this year, it's getting into winter. So if you're going to buy them, buy them now. One of, my, uh, one of my friends, at one point, I told her about my elderberry syrup, and she was like, ooh, I want to do that. And elderberries had, like, tripled in price at that point. So you want oh to get them gosh. early while they're still cheap. <laughs> I think it's a secret. I don't think many people are doing that over here. There's not that many people making these herbal remedies at home. And that's what I love about you, Mira, is you teach us the ingredients that we can use so simply in our own kitchens with amazing therapeutic benefits. 
Well, and so I'll be really honest. I'm assuming that elderberries grow in Australia. I don't know if they do. If not, you're going to have to import them. Yeah, I know. But I, I, they have to because, I mean, can't you get elderberry syrup there? We can get elderberry syrup, yeah. So then they, they must grow there. Well, I've got to double, double check out once we hang up. <laughs> but I think they do. I did check this. And then, Mira, can you please tell us the thing that we've been talking about backwards? Oh, the fire the cider. Yeah. Because I am yeah. sure, and anyone listening, correct me if I'm wrong, who has heard of this? Yeah, I know <laughs> Every American's heard of it, but I'm not convinced that Australia and New Zealanders know what it is. So enlighten us. So fire cider is a term given to a vinegar drink that is just steeped with massive amounts of beneficial herbs and spices. And so you brew up a big batch of it and then drink it all weekend long. And it's really, really fabulous. So the, the recipe that I use is actually not mine. I got it from a place called Mountain Rose Herbs, but uh, I, I looked it up because I don't have it memorized. And so I'm gonna tell you what's in it. It's a half a cup of, fr a half a cup of fresh grated ginger, half a cup of fresh grated horseradish. And so if you, have you ever grated horseradish before? So can we go back to this horseradish, Mara? Because in New Zealand, that is a very hard ingredient to find. You almost have to grow it yourself, but our organic stores, and I've searched for this all weekend long, do not stock it. You have to home grow it yourself. And my oldest wow. sister, when she lived in the country, it grew like weeds that she had so much of it. So I was like, yes, but she doesn't live in the country anymore. So I don't know where I'm going to get my sauce from. Oh my goodness. Well, so you may have to get some seed and grow it yourself. It, you can grow it in a pot, actually. You can grow it in a big pot. And that'll keep it from taking off like a weed. You can grow it yourself at home in your kitchen? No, in, in outside, oh, in a okay. big in a pot, pot, a big gotcha. pot. Yeah. And then that way it'll stay in the pot and it won't take off across the yard. <laughs> but if you've <laughs> never had fresh horseradish, let me tell you something. When you grate that stuff, your eyes tear up, your nose runs, it opens up your sinuses. It's just really powerful stuff. Um, we get it in a paste. But we just can't get it fresh. Oh, yeah. So, no, what, what you want to do is you want to get it fresh. Because that's so going to be the most it. potent. Yeah. Got it. And the most powerful. Here's the thing. If you absolutely cannot get it fresh, then I suppose you could, after you've brewed it, you could steep it with some of the jarred stuff. But it's not going to be as good. Because exactly. a lot of I the, agree. Yeah. It's a key ingredient from what I can say. Anyway, keep going. I interrupted you. Okay. One onion chopped. The whole thing. Well, 10 cloves of garlic again chopped two jalapenos now when I make it I seed those suckers because with the seeds in them it makes it so hot I don't like it but really the hotter the better the spicier the better because this stuff is totally boosting to your immune system the zest of a of a good sized lemon and then the herbs that you want in it are rosemary turmeric and cayenne and then what you do is you put all of that into a big jar and then you fill it up with apple cider vinegar and you put like, I use um, an unbleached coffee filter on the top so that air can get in and out, but bugs don't get in. And then you put it in a cool, dark space to sit for like a month. So, I mean, you can make it now, but it won't be ready for a month. Exactly. <laughs> so People need to get early. onto this quick smart so that they get it when July and August are our coldest months. So if we start yeah. making it now, we can get it. So would you have that preventatively as well? Like in winter, are you having a yes. of that each day as well? Yeah. So what happens is you're, you're doing that. You're, you're making it so it sits for a month. And then and every now and then you go and just give it a little shake to agitate what's in it. And then you strain it really well. And then add, again, a little bit of raw honey. And it's really important, you know, raw honey is so beneficial for us, especially for seasonal health issues, for upper respiratory, et cetera. But you want it to be raw. And as much as possible, you want it to be local. So you add in a little bit of local. We're good with the <laughs> you do. We can do the honey side, Mira. We might not be able to do Really, really well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
So, but anyhow, so then you add that in and then again, you just, you know, a spoonful a day. And if you're sick, then you bump it up to three spoonfuls a day. But let me tell you something. You saw that picture of me that Trudy took with that fire cider. You take one spoonful of that and you're just like, Whoa! but it's so good. <laughs> so it's really those good are your you. preventative tips. And when you get really sick, you're also having those two things. Are you having any other herbal remedies at home come winter time? Yeah, so there are a number of things that I really encourage people to do in the winter. One is, and my husband laughs at me for this, but I swear, if one of us gets sick and I do this and he doesn't, I get better faster. So I just have to believe, you know, power of observation, raw garlic is so beneficial. When you feel like you have something coming on, chop up some raw garlic, let it sit for just a minute or two, because the allicin that's in it is very potent, so you want it to oxidize a little bit, and it helps amplify that. And then you just honestly uh, take a spoonful, put it on a spoon, have a glass of water ready, put it in, swig it down, and then just kind of go, Ugh. Uh, It is but just like that. Oh. But it, yeah, but it's really important too, you have to have something in your stomach because raw garlic will make you nauseous. Yeah. So don't take it on an empty stomach. And then I'm just a big fan of herbal teas, like getting the raw herbs and putting them together. There's a lot of different, sage tea is very good for you. It's very supportive. Rose hips, um, you know, or even like lemon peel, citrus peel, those are really good sources of vitamin C, vitamin A, again, those bioflavonoids that are really, really healthy for us in the winter. And then also things like echinacea, dandelion, nettles, those are all really good things to have in your medicine cabinet. And so you can actually, um, there's an upper respiratory tea that you can make. And so this you could make now. You could just get it and then have it aside. So if you have a little bit of a cough or you've got some sinus stuff going on, you could definitely take this. And it's, um, it's got comfrey, nettle, uh, peppermint, chamomile for those people who can. Some people can't take chamomile. We'll talk yeah. about that in just a second. Um, Colt's foot, mullein, and uh, cinnamon, and you put all of those together, and then you just, it's like a heaping teaspoon in a cup of hot water, let it steep for three to four minutes, strain it and drink it, and so that can be a really good thing to have in the winter as well. Totally, and you're so right. I like to batch make these things. I'm a bit lazy, so I'll often make a lot of them in a pot and just keep them yeah. in the jar and just keep reheating them because there's so so Absolutely. much power in herbal teas. Like you say, fresh herbs from our garden, growing all these things, there's so many medicinal benefits to them. Yes, there absolutely is. And the other thing is, if you've made it up in advance, you don't have to go rummaging around for it when you need it. It's one of those things you kind of want to have in advance. That's um, Amira. I'm all about simplifying and streamlining life. <laughs> if I'm going to make that all the time, I'm not, like, while it's fun to go to the garden and pick my sage leaves and all the leaves once or twice on a cold, blustering morning, I ain't doing that. I'm going for the easy option. Well, especially if you're not feeling good. I mean, if you've got a cold and you're just, all you want to do is wrap up and lie on the sofa with a cup of tea, the last thing you want to do is have to go get the herbs and chop them up. So exactly. plus the other thing is fresh herbs are far more potent by a power of three to one than the dried herbs. And so sometimes the flavors can be a little unpleasant, except for things like mint. But, you know, like if I go to my garden right now, and remember it's summertime here, but I have sage growing. If I pick sage and try to make a sage tea, it's going to be overpowering because mm. the sage is fresh. It's full of all of those oils and it's really going to be kind of overwhelming. And so it's better to do it dry where you can still get the benefits without getting that unpleasant, overpowering taste. Got it. And you're right. And like, it makes it way more affordable too and fun for the family when you're getting it out of the garden too. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then there's one more tea that I, I like, um, slippery elm with a little bit oh, of yeah. licorice root in it. And so those are things that you, you have to buy. I, I don't even know, like I, I'm assuming slippery elm we, would be hard to we can buy grow. It. We, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I just buy it. Yeah. And then licorice root, you can buy dried. So, um, but those two together, steeped in a cup of tea with a good wallop of honey in it is great for a sore throat because both of those are emulsifants. And so they help, you know, with a, with a sore throat, help make things better. 
And Mira, will you tell us a little bit about chamomile? Because everyone thinks about chamomile being the calming tea and like having it just before they go to bed to relax themselves. But that is not the case for everybody, right? That's very true. Yeah. So some people are allergic to chamomile tea. And one of the ways to know is if you are allergic to ragweed or peppermint, then you should avoid chamomile because those three things are all botanically related to each other. And so drinking chamomile tea is not going to be very restful or relaxing for your body. The good news is, you know, we have so many beneficial herbs and there are so many wonderful plants out there. If you can't do chamomile, you could try vervain, you could try linden. There are a number of other teas. And as a matter of fact, in preparation for our talk, I pulled out oh, my two favorite herbal books. Look at so that Mira. I could show them to you. Star student much, Mira? Ah. So this so, is the Complete Medicinal Herbal by Penelope Odie. And I'll send them to you so you can link yes, to them. Please do. But um, this, is, this is the first herbal that I ever bought. This is a great book. And one of the reasons that I like it is that it gives you fabulous pictures. Oh, I so love that pictures. you can really see all of the different parts of the plant. It tells you how to use them, what it's good for. And then the other is a book that I actually got from, because so I'm, I'm not an herbalist. I'm an herb dabbler. And I have a friend, Heather, who is my herbalist. When I need herbal preparations, I go to Heather. And she gifted me with this book which I am just loving. It is so it amazing. amazing. It's Body into Balance, an herbal guide to holistic self-care. And it talks about all different kinds of things and it has recipes in it. It's just a really fabulous book. So I'll send you oh, a link you to this one yes, as well. Please. We all need a Heather in our lives. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, as nutrition professionals, I'm always encouraging our colleagues to reach out to, you know, aromatherapists, herbalists, other practitioners, because we do the nutrition part really, really well. But we need to remember, like, I know a little bit about herbs. So if someone needs a little something, I can help them. But if they need more than that, I send them to Heather. So have a relationship that, you know, you can work with. And, and for people who are, you know, not nutrition professionals, but people who are looking for alternatives, Obviously, get yourself a great book, learn, but also don't be afraid to reach out to somebody who is an herbalist. They went to school for this. Like, they know a lot. Totally. And you're so right. There's so, like you've just shared with us those three drinks, so many healing benefits this winter. And it's just the knowledge and just doing them, doing little self-care practices. You can turn it into a self-care ritual. It's so beautiful starting your day with this beautiful, calming, soothing tea. And if you're getting medicinal benefits from it, it's even better. I know. Well, and the other thing that I love is knowing that I have like my elderberry syrup for years. I used to buy elderberry syrup and I've still got a little bit left in my jar in the in the fridge because we didn't use that much this winter. Thank goodness. But uh, it's just nice to know that it's right there. I don't have to run to the store and get it I, if I'm not because you can't plan when you're when you're going to need it. No, you know? it's like all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then, <laughs> you're right Mira it's true or you picked up a bug from your child or from your workmate or whatever and you're like darn it what am I going to do now and you get miserable I know and then there's one last thing that I believe belongs in everybody's winter medicine cabinet and that is um chelated silver so it comes oh in gosh. a liquid totally yes. agree a client comes coughing into clinic what they don't realize is when they leave I'm like yeah yeah it's fine for you to cough and splutter in here but I'm totally rinsing this chelated silver once you're gone. Absolutely. Well, and, and the other thing is it's so good for our immune system. It's so boosting. And so to have that is also something that's a really good, you know, just a beneficial medicine cabinet that doesn't require, you know, because when, when you go to the drugstore, to the, the pharmacy, and you look at the shelves, all of these things, they have artificial colors in them. They have all kinds of preservatives and other chemicals in them that are not great for us. So if you're sick, why do you want to put things into your body that aren't going to help you get better? You don't. Right. So, but you know, and, and so the first year is when you're like, darn, missed the boat on that. Got to plan earlier next year. But then yeah, you get I into a routine. Yeah, I should have had you on in May. 
<laughs> Where was the preempt? Yeah, well, so you're not you're not a month behind. You're just uh, you're just right in preparing. the middle. Preparing. Yeah. And so yeah. So you're preparing now. <laughs> We're it's here not too month, late, really, Mira. We're gonna nail yeah. it for next year. There you go, right? We'll send out little send out little memos. It's time. <laughs> Get prepared. So when it hits ninety degrees in Texas, I send you a message and say, Shelly, start cooking. <laughs> exactly. You're onto it, right? And everyone's yeah. going to get your Facebook live video for the years to come in May reminding them to get brewing. Yeah, there you go. That's so funny. That's very <laughs> thank cool. You, thank you so much for joining us and for giving us your tips and tricks. And I'll post all the recipes and the books as well for everyone. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. It's always great to talk with you. Thank you, Mira. Bye. See ya.